Okay, I got myself set up, and if you noticed, I built the frame around here because I'm going to be belt sanding this. This sets in there so this doesn't move. It costs money to buy these different clamps to hold this down. Um, so what I did was just come up with this idea. Uh, it's cheaper and of course, if you don't have the money, this is the way to do it. Okay, from here, I'm using a 120 grit on the belt sander and I'm going to take down these plugs. Now, the glue is still not dry yet, which is good. I'm taking down the plugs, any sawdust will go down in any crack and fill it up. Okay, here we go. Okay, you're going to go ahead and do that with all eight plugs. Once they're flat, then we're going to go over the whole thing with the belt sander and get it real smooth. Okay, all the plugs are they're all sanded down with a 120 from the belt sander. Next step is to uh, start sanding off the ends here. Now this is uh, the end grain here. Of course the grain's running this way. Now remember, end grain can be sanded either direction, but we want to sand it this way. So what I'm going to do is put it on the sander and sand with the grain. Real important, hold it back on the fence. See how it tilts? You'll be sanding this first. You don't want to. This sticks out further back here. So we're going to hold it against the fence and start sanding. Got her all flat and smooth. Now I used an 80 grit on this because the sanding in grain can be real hard even though this is a softer wood it's still real hard to sand. Okay so I'm going to do all four sides with this and then we'll uh, go from there. All right Got it all done. That was 80 grit, of course. Now rub your fingernails across each part. See if you can catch it anywhere. All right? Do all edges, and if you can't catch any kind of, you know, overhang, then you're good. From here, we're going to take it to a 120. Before we take it to a 120 grit, we're going to go ahead and get the lid set up on it. The reason we're not going to sand any more right now is because in case you get a little ding or something in it, as we sand, it'll come out. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the back of this flat. Okay, that's where the hinges will go. All right, now I want to, uh, I'm going to go for about a half inch overhang on the three sides. Remember the back's flat, so you just want a half inch overhang here and here. So let's see, we got, um, we got 16 inches, so we're going to cut this to 17, and we got nine and a quarter. I'm only going to add a half half inch because I'm not doing the back. So nine and a quarter would that be nine and three quarters? Okay. So what we'll do is take it over to the table saw. First thing we'll do is just cut off a little bit of this, measure 17, cross cut this, and then send it through the rip fence, which would be nine and three quarters. Okay. Okay, now that it's been sent through the table saw, cut this off, we measured it out here to 17, and then this way we cut it to nine and three quarters. Now remember, uh, this side was already jointed, this side was, but since you cut it off, you're gonna wanna send it through the jointer one time, which I did already. So from here, we're gonna go over to the bench sander, and we're gonna sand both end grains here, because remember, like I said, this is so hard, it still has the 80 grit on it, so we're going to take it over there and sand both edges. Okay, we're going to take it over here and we'll hold it against the fence and we're going to set it down and we're going to sand both end grains, okay? Let's get them as best we can <clears throat> and then uh, from that point we're going to have a nice board, okay? Let's get started.
Okay, I'm set up to put your hinges on. Now, this gets a little tricky. If um, you do it wrong, it, it can cause nothing but a disaster when it comes to the lid. So, what I did was I took, I had a shoe box and I cut it out, and right, then I cut little pieces off, and I got a piece under here, and I have a piece under here. Okay, now I got it flat. I got it flat. I also made sure this is a half inch, and this is a half inch. Then I clamped it. Now, if you notice why I did that, <clears throat> we have a little space in here. Okay, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's a space in here now. You gotta have that space, because when you go to lacquer this, it'll swell up a little, and you don't want it to hit first here before the front hits, otherwise the lid stays up. Okay, so that's the first thing you have to do to set yourself up to put the hinges on. Now, kind of look at them, see where you want them. All right, um, I'm, out here is too far, they just don't look right. In here is too far, so you kind of eyeball the see which one. I'm going for about two inches in, so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is put a, I already got this at two inches. Go ahead and do them, set them both for two inches, like so. From here, we're gonna have to draw lines and center punch them, so let me zoom up on this. Okay, from here, we might make sure that we have the middle of this in the opening there, okay? You want the hinge to where it lines up right there, like just like so. Okay, now we're gonna go in two inches. I just have it on here, so move it over. Line this up, look straight down at it. You want the middle of this in the middle of the line. So from that point, put your pencil straight in and mark a circle on both of them. Okay. All right, now we have a circle. Now it's really important that you center punch right in the middle of the circle. All right now I got too dense. The purpose of that, if you see some of this like this darker grain here and the darker grain in here, that's harder than the whiter part. So if you didn't do this and try to put the screw in, it's going to jump off the harder part of the grain and go into the softer part. Now it throws everything off. Okay, so now what you're going to do is put you're going to drill it out just a little bit just for the screw to, to guide itself in. Okay, I'm not going to go very deep. I just want to sew this straight in just, just a little bit. That's it. See, I got a little teeny drill bit. You don't have to go very far. Now, you're going to do the same to this, the bottom. You're going to do the same to the, the other hinge. And then when you're done, we're going to put the screws in. Okay, now that I got these in, go ahead and circle. Now it's going to be easier because you got those locked down. Go ahead and put your circle. Okay, from that point you can go ahead and do what we did up here and you're going to do the same on the other hinge. Okay, we've got the hinges on. Uh, be real careful when you're drilling your pilot holes on this. Remember, this is only like 5 inch thick. You don't want to go through, so be careful. Here's not an issue because it's all the way, it's, you know, you, don't, you won't go through there, but careful on this side. Now, if you're going to paint this, I suggest you go probably two of these. Uh, put two in here and two in here. You want a bigger gap because paint is a little thicker. And you don't want, like I said, you don't want this to hit before the other side does. Okay, let's take it apart. All right, so we're going to open it up. You see, now here's our shoebox pieces. All right, now... Here, all nice that closes. All right, from there we're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna route out the three edges here. I'm gonna put a little design. I'm not gonna do it on the back because it's flat, but I'm gonna go around the three edges with some kind of design. Okay, this is the design I think I'm gonna come up with here. If you noticed, I got this set about halfway. I'm not gonna cut out the full design the first time. It uh, tears the wood. It's just too much. So I got it set about halfway. I'm gonna run it around. Then I'm going to lower this, and then I'm going to run around to get to get the full design. Okay. Well, what do you think? Maybe just that design is good enough. Don't even take it to a full design. You don't want it too fancy because the box not fancy. So you know what? I'm. At, I think I'll just leave it with that design. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this off. Okay. Here I got just a simple design. I'm not going to lower the the bit anymore and put a fancier design on it because it's a simple box. 
but if you notice here, it kind of burnt. Uh, that bit is not very sharp, so this is what happens, especially on ingrain, because it's so hard. So next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off the hinges, and then I'm gonna go over to the bench sander, and I'm gonna put a 120, probably a 220, a 320 on it, and then I'm gonna stop, and then I'm gonna put it back together, and then we'll put the plugs in. Okay, I got it set up with a 120. So now it's time to go ahead and uh, sand all flat surfaces with a 120. So let's get started on that. I'm done. I did the lid in the box with the 320. From this point what we're going to do is we're going to go over and do our finish sanding. We're going to finish the lid in the box. So that's our next step. All right, it's time to finish sand. Now if you're using a block, okay, we're going to start with a 320 even though we did a 320 on the bench sander. We're still going to do a 320 again. Now if you're using a block, make sure you follow the grain. Okay, like this so far and so forth. You're going to do the top, go across. Okay, we're going to finish the whole box off. Now, the advantage of this is I can go any direction with this, but I still follow the grain anyway, but this is less muscle power. Remember, you got scratches in here. If you're going to take them out, it's going to take quite a while. If you plan on painting this, then I wouldn't worry, but still, let's finish sanding. Okay, I did this side, so I got a little rubber mat. I put it down, so when I flip it over, it's not going to scratch that at all. with a 320 and a 400. Now what we're going to do is take a 400, another piece of 400. What we want to do is go around all the edges, okay, and then just sand them off where they're not quite as sharp. So we're going to do all the edges on the whole entire box, okay. Now I already sanded this out, but just do like so. Don't have to do much, but you're rounding the edges. Okay, now be careful not to put the sandpaper on here because now you're going to scratch this. So when you do it, put it maybe like this so you don't accidentally put scratches across here. Okay, let's do the entire box. Okay, we completed a 400 grit on the entire box. Okay, you want to wipe it all down. Okay, go around and check. Make sure all the scratches are out of it and uh, there's no dings or any kind of dirt marks. That's why I use this rubber. The, these are for uh, tool drawers. They work really good. Because once you start finishing, you don't want to set it on anything else but something soft. Okay, next step. We're going to put the plugs in. Okay, I'm going to take a little air and just make sure to blow out the plugs in all eight of them. Now, you take a small regular toothpick, you break it off like so. Okay, now, if you noticed here, I went and marked all the plugs with the grain, which way it's running. It's a little easier, because sometimes you can't tell, so this way you can go through them all real fast. So the grain's not like that, so since I'm staining it, I want it to run the same way. So what you want to do is just squirt a little glue on your tabletop with a broken end. You put some glue and you go and kind of go around the inside of it. Okay, you don't want much on top. You don't want it to come out. You don't want the glue to come out uh, because stain, when you put stain on it, the stain will not take the glue and then you'll see the glue. All right, so from there, you got enough glue in it. Push it in, 
and just lightly tap it with a uh, something plastic. All right, now we're going to do that to all eight of them. Okay, we've got the plugs um, all glued in. The next step is to stain it. Okay, now um, this is a natural stain here because it's fir or pine. I notice if you do a natural stain, it just looks better. It's up to you. Take a sample, and if you want to put black walnut or some other kind of stain on it, it's up to you. But um, I just like the regular natural fir, fir or pine. So let's go ahead and start here. Okay, what we're gonna do is take a brush, gonna mix this up a little, make sure it's mixed real good. Okay, now just go ahead and brush it on. What you wanna do is brush the, do one side at a time. <clears throat> Time I'm done there, then I want to take a clean, dry towel. I want to wipe this off. I want it on there if I can get away with it. Okay, then I just go around and wipe it all off. Okay, wipe around your plugs. All right, we're going to do this to the whole box. If you decide you want to stain the inside of the box, that's okay. <clears throat> I'm not going to. So I'm just going to do the outer edge, so be real careful. Uh, do the brush like so, so it doesn't run inside. If it runs inside, then it's gonna, it's not gonna look good. So, just take your time on the edge. Do one edge at a time. All right. Then you wipe it down. Okay. That prevents from running. You don't want it to run down here because it's gonna show up. Okay. Okay. Got the box totally done. Now you want to run the rag across everything, kind of polish it up a little bit. Make sure you do it all again, just make sure it's all polished. Now you're going to store this at least 60 degrees or so. I, I'm going to put it inside. You want to let it sit for 24 hours. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do the lid and uh, I'm going to do the, ins the inside and outside and edges on the lid. Okay. Then I'm going to let it sit for 24 hours. Okay, it's uh, time to put a coat of uh, lacquer sanding sealer on it, and so let's get started. Okay, it's uh, been sealed. I'll do the bottom of each part later. Let it dry for at least an hour. Then you're going to have to sand it real lightly with a 400, and then repeat this process a couple more times. This is the third and final coat I'm going to be putting on of the lacquer sanding sealer. Remember, uh, use a 400 on it. Let it dry at least an hour, depending on weather. Okay, but just barely sand it. You just want to get it smooth without removing too much of the sealer. Okay, this will be the last sealing coat. Okay. That'll do it. We're going to let this dry for, um, well, let's let it dry for 24 hours. Then we're just going to lightly touch it with a 400. At that point, we're going to lacquer it. It's been 24 hours, so this is our third coat of lacquer sanding sealer. It's been dried now 400 real fast. I already did this, but if you're feeling little bumps or bugs or whatever, you want to just make sure lightly sand them off. See little white spots here? I'm kind of getting into the, the lacquer sanding seal a little bit. You're okay. You want to get it smooth, removing all form particles that landed on there while it's drying. Now, I got a clear lacquer. <clears throat> it's a satin finish, and uh, it's a brush-on type lacquer. Now, you want to get yourself a good super, it'll, be, it'll say super soft bristles on it. You want to do that when you go to put this on. Now, be real careful. You want to put it on as thin as possible. You want to n never go overboard on the first time because it, it, like, it can't stick. So really stretch it. Remember like I showed you go out on the edge, you stretch it as far as you can. All right, keep stretching it. Thinner the better. All right, you thin, thin, thin. Okay, and once you get the box covered, if you're not sure, look into the light and you can see if you covered it all. 
Okay, cover the whole box. I'm going in any direction right here, but you got to do it fast. Now I'm going to go back and forth straightening it out. Okay, you got to do it fast now. You want to straighten out, go with the grain. It's kind of tough, you got to be quick at this. The first coat you want as thin as possible. Okay, I think I got it all covered. Okay, now we're going to go over the whole box just like this. You're going to let it sit for about three to four hours. Do not sand it again. Just put another coat of lacquer on it, real thin, okay? Okay, our last step is uh, putting the hinges on. I decided to go a little further with the box, so what I did is I uh, took some clear pine and I planed it down half inch here, then another piece and I planed it to quarter inch, and then I took this piece here and I notched it out with the table saw so these pieces will fit in nice and firm. Okay, you cut this to length, you make sure everything slides in, kind of firm, not too tight, but not too loose. If it slides in, you take it out, then you glue these pieces in, Put a 90 on them, make sure they're all 90, let it dry overnight. Now when you come back, you can just take this piece and slide it in, which I did. Then I just lacquered the inside of all the squares, let it dry. And then I added a chain here so the lid won't go back too far because it'll tear off the hinges if it goes back too far. Alright, just an extra tip. This ends the Builder Series, Building a Wooden Box. Please check us out on uh, Facebook and Twitter. The links are in the description box below. If you like the video, please thumbs it up and share it. If you want to see more, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.